Yo, yo, yo. First smoke of the day, man. We're back again. Amsterdam. Episode 17. This is another legendary episode, man. Pat God's here. I'm here with my co-host, Black Leaf. What's good, bro? Oh, man. I'm super excited. I mean, like uh, that and I'm mellowed out sounding because we just smoked some insane dank. I mean, blow your mind fire. I'm pretty lit off some Dutch grown Z right now. <laughs> Who we got in the building, man? Special, super special guest. Thank you for your time, bro. Karma Genetics. How you doing, big dog? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Thank you for joining us, man. Coming out here to the dam. Yes. Yes. Driving out. Yeah. For real. And bringing some gifts and, I mean, just showing love. It's been off the chain. Brought some real gear, gear, brought some real flavors and some real hashish. Yes. Came right. Yeah. I mean, we've been hunting all over Amsterdam. And I can honestly say, like, we found the next level. Yeah, I got this permagrant on my face right now from that Z, for sure. My mind and is permagrant. And then the haze. The haze brought me back 10 years ago. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm you know, reminiscing. I haven't had haze, fresh-grown, sticky haze that had that turp profile and that nose Band-Aid. on it. Band-Aid. That really tasted like it, too. And then we put some, some Nepalese <laughs> ashish in it. Straight worm from. in there <laughs> <laughs> and got this thing going. And now you see what we got here. I mean, man, and, and just the flavor and how it's burning too. It just shows you like, I mean, everything's burning white, proper, everything's smoking and the psychoactive, I mean, on these hazes is incredible. Like I haven't smoked weed like this in the States in a long time. I haven't seen weed like this because the combination of how it's grown, you you killed it, man. I mean, I, I know you don't need to hear that, but you crushed it. And then the strains are something so different. I mean, right in front of me, Pat Gods, I'm looking at Band-Aid Haze 75 times Haze yeah, or the, Band-Aid 75 the Haze. First, the first thing he said was he was like, I didn't bring you none of that gelato shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys see that every day. Yeah. 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 No, for real. It, it was it was good to hear that and good to to know that, that you knew we would love to see some some real Dutch grown flavors. Does it interest you at all to breed with them? Oh yeah, no, it does. It okay. Does. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. It's just, there's no point because everyone else is doing it right now. So why not pick a different lane? No, I do breed with it as well. Yeah. Okay. I breed with it as well. And I like to smoke it as well. Okay. Then all the young guys around me, they, they just, they, they, they love they that. Keep, they want yeah. that. They yeah, keep, yeah, they keep yeah. you, they keep you in that conversation of where things are going and, I see your gear. And I mean, obviously with the Zitos and everything else, like you've been mixing with the new school and you've been involved in that conversation, like actively. So that's dope because it's kind of like, like LeBron James right now, he's about to play basketball with a kid that was on his son's team in the NBA. You know what I mean? So Sick. it's just like crazy. It's like legacies of mixture and people, you know what I mean? Able to come together now and and bring the things out that, that so are he's got out. these young growers basically bringing yeah, him hundreds 100%. of new strains and he gets to maybe pick and yeah. choose which ones are actually worthwhile absolutely okay i love it because these are zbx number one that's that dutch grown z right there and amnesia doesn't even have to classic. say hey so we know what that is classic i mean and and what do you so, got in front of you bro what do you describe the amnesia as for over there what what that is like this is a amnesia cut that's grown in the south of Holland a lot. Um, they call it like a high pro cut. High pro is like a nutrient company. And this is like their cut. This is what most commercial growers in Holland grow. Like you'll find this in every coffee shop. Yeah. So yeah. this is like our Gorilla Glue 4 type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one gift I got so far from a random person, Dutch was an amnesia haze nug. Yeah, he was like, try the my amnesia. You know? Yeah, they like outside of Amsterdam. You know, if you go to like the smaller towns and stuff that have a coffee shop, this is like their their St- good weed. Staple. This is what all the kids smoke and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that makes sense, and it, and it's you can you can tell why. Yeah, I mean, dude, and it's flavor. soaring high. Yeah, flavor, smell. Yep, beautiful look, structure. Uplifting. You can tell it yields well. I mean, yeah, it's very <clears> easy to grow. It can take a lot of abuse and stuff like that as well. So it has a higher market price than like what they call white weed here, which is like the today's, not the back in the day, but today's white widow type things that you see on the menus or the power plant PP. Man, could you tell me a little bit about the BA 75 haze, the Band-Aid haze? 
So that's uh, Band-Aid Haze number seven, which is a cut that came from the US. Um, and this is crossed with the uh, A5, which Jeez. is like a Dutch old Haze cut. Man, this is incredible. This one is just off the chain. I know anyone who's it's like a real old school haze. Yeah. And then it's also got this, it, it's got structure, which I know a lot of people, if you've seen the, the hazes from New York and the old school Band-Aid haze, there's not much structure to it. It's a very, from what I've seen in the years of my, me getting it, it's a very small bud. It's very hairy. And this actually has structure and, and crystal content off the chain. I posted it on my story. And it smokes and tastes its Band-Aid haze off the charts. <laughs> I'm blown away. As far as the Z line, I'm looking at the KZ, the Z teeny. Then we had the ZBX. What's all that come from? Like, what 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 originated that? And in, in- well, um, me and my friend, we love smoking Skittles, but we don't like to grow it. <laughs> Every time I give it to a friend and I let them grow it because they say, oh, I want to grow that. I really want to grow that. Mm-hmm. They only grow it once. Yeah. And then they don't want to grow it anymore. Yeah. Oh, so, the weeping uh, willow. No one wants to grow weeping willow. <laughs> it, it doesn't root that well. Um, you know, so what I thought is, well, I'm going to make something for us that, that we can grow so we can smoke it, which is like a bit of better branching, not as weak branching, uh, need to root good, but the flavor also needs to be very similar. And that's was it's kind of hard with Skittles, I think, when you breed with it. So um, it took a couple of tries. You mean like the lemon wants to come out, or some of the mom or the dad wants to come out, or wants to get more like Jackie, or what? Like, what do you mean well, hard? No, like it depends a little bit what you cross it with. But a lot of times, if you just make like normal hybrid, like a Skittles times something, the Skittles don't always really come out. Like you plant a hundred, you have a hundred females and maybe only like 10 or 15, you can recognize it in right away. And it's still different than that original Z. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to go through a good amount of seeds to find something that is going to be very similar. Yeah. So I made two different hybrids. Um, I crossed Z with uh, my sour diesel, which are called Zauer. And in that, this, the Z kind of went to the background more. So then I did a... Uh, a thing that's called the uh, Z-teeny, which is uh, the Z times uh, lemon uh, teeny. And this is really different. Yeah, it is different. And it does lean towards Z with the structure. It does. But and the smell is there. I mean, it, the Z smell is there, but it's, it's, it's a twist. Yeah. It's a twist. I like it. We didn't smoke it yet, but. No, nah, it's nice as well. I like the, nice I, well. I like the turp on that a lot. Super complex. And then the ZBX. Yeah. So the ZBX, that's uh, the Z the back Z, rust. That, yeah. That's the Z times Z teeny. Because the Z teeny came oh, out. That, much so that's Z times Z teeny is ZBX. Yes. Yes. Because that um, Z teeny came out much more. The Skittles came through much more. Like if you look at a bigger group of right. females. Yep. So that's why I picked that over the Zauer to do a back cross. Smart um, because now with the ZBX, it's like I'm looking at it as like this is Dutch grown Z. Like, because t- to me, it's like that's you know, put your spin on it. It's uh, it's it's leaning more towards Z now, you know what I mean? Yes, that one is that one is, yeah. That, 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 and then the there's another pheno of it as well, which is labeled KZ, and th- that's not exactly like Skittles, it has like a different type of thing, you know, it's more different. I love it. Has it. more like a melon on it. Yeah, I, I I like it. It's complex. I had to move around the nugs too because I started getting different hints of like some sour in there. Yeah, yeah, really nice. What is it? What is the KZ? What did you back? What did you cross this with? So that's the same thing as the um, just a different pheno. Yes, got it. Man, so then I'm looking at, and this is crazy. <laughs> the C5 Haze times C5 Durban. Yeah. And it's the Band-Aid Haze. And this is literally like Not New it. York Haze that no one's seen in 10 years. Fresh and crazy. And like, better structure and crystal like content. It. I'm seeing it done well. Wow. Re- have you ever seen it done that well? I've never seen it done that well in packs. This is like taking a trip in a time machine, but not losing the quality. You know, so, still, yeah. still, still fire that grew this he's been growing this for like more than 20 years as well 
and he still you grows it exactly the same like it, it was it used to be grown. So he only wow. grows this as well. He only grows hazes. He won't grow anything else. That's all he does. And they're all you they, said they're they're going to need him in New York. As and he said goes on. 14 to 16 he, weeks on most he, of these. I think at the moment he's probably one of the best haze growers I think here in Holland. This is good. Yeah, I mean, he's very good. This is literally you know, this was I'm not comparing this to haze in general. I'm comparing this to like the best haze that I ever saw. Yes. Like in my day. <laughs> you know, 10 years ago. So, and we saw a decent amount of it. Yeah, a lot. South Florida, Florida, I mean, come on. New York. Yeah, everywhere. Oh. Now, this guy really knows how to grow it, you know? I grow it myself sometimes as well, but the way he can do it is, like, it's very special. What do you yeah. think the days are, the harvest days on most of those hazes? Like, how well, many Most days? of these are, like, between 14 and 16-week flower. Wow. So, you, yeah. I mean, a lot of dedication to that. You're yeah. almost talking two cycles to one. Like, you know what I'm saying? For a lot of yeah. 55 to 60-day growers, that's, yeah. that's two runs. They, they, they are high-yielding, though. Like they can yield like a very, very high. Like, okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I would grow the hell out. of. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous and this is so different. I saw a company recently pop up in Miami that was trying to basically bring the haze back and they're selling jars and, and it's this whole reminiscent jar, you know, of the, the band aid, the old haze and this and that. And I just thought, wow, I wonder if that's really it, you know, because it's been so long and, it's like I, we used to have a grapefruit cut that was like yeah. a fresh sliced red grapefruit just squirted in your face and your mouth. Like, and this is before hashes for us were big in the U S. So we used to grow it as flour. And now with the hash coming back, all I can think about is how amazing it would have been if I, st if we still had that grapefruit cut <clears throat> because the hash rosin, even if it yielded small, it would have been mind bending like Skittles, you yes. know? Yes. So many cuts lost. Same with, we used to run a D Dutch Passions Blueberry. Okay. And uh, early 2000s. And we had this Fino that was just, <clears throat> it would put out small blueberries, literally just round blue blueberry. Oh, and we just, same thing, got lost, you know, with crazy grow life. That's it. That's it. It's a sn snake and letter life. And it's wild out here. Cat we mouse. didn't realize that. We came out here thinking, they're allowed to sell weed. They're allowed to smoke it. Oh, there's a bunch of growers out there, man. Yeah, there must, to them. there must be some, you know, huge gray grows. area or something, you know, but and come to find out, no, it's not cool at all. No, so, when it comes to the growing part, it's still yeah, very, very legal. It's like uh, 2000s Florida. Well, it's just crazy New because York. like Amsterdam came and they owned cannabis with the coffee shops t uh, across the world, right? They own that model. And so why everyone thinks Amsterdam, you know, should be evolved is because they were the first to own cannabis in a sense in their society. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you come back. I, I came here when I was 19 in 2007 and I'm coming back now. I'm 33, it's 2021. <laughs> and it's the same as far as coffee shop wise. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. You know what I mean? There's a few, there are new shops, new names, but it's the same as far as like the, how they do it, what they do and what they have for the most part is like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, th there've been a lot of changes of course in this long time, you know, so, um, things change, um, like, uh, laws or the way they go after growers and things like that, that will change the whole market. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you look at like, uh, the nineties, um, and early two thousands, and there were a lot of small growers. Yeah. So a lot of people would you know, use like one of their bedrooms or whatever. Yeah. And put up four lights and things like that. Um, and then they made a, a law that uh, the mayor of a town, if you get ca caught with a grow, they can uh, cl kick you out of your house. Oh. Yeah. And close your house for like three months. Um, you can even get really kicked out. And then it's hard to rent a new house, things like that. So that scared people. Yeah. Yeah. Because most of these small growers are like, um, have families yeah, or and have a or job. Or divorced moms yes. and stuff. And most of the time it was people that didn't make that much money. And this was the, the perfect extra thing to have a little bit extra for like the kids and things like that. Mm -hmm. So and that, that not, it's not all even that. a big money. It's all no, like, like, like that can't for lighters and things like that. And a great yeah. hobby and focus. Yeah. Yeah. Made it hard to find help. 
yeah. and, and canceled all that out as far as like, you know, making it a family thing. And then came down on the gross stores. And then it, that was, I mean, between a couple of d- we'll, laws. We'll, and, we'll keep, and you can see the, the only effect it does is that it pushes it in, into the hands of like the more criminal and organized groups. And yeah. people that don't care. Like the much. normal guy don't yeah. want to do it anymore. Import. You know, so it's yeah. it's like the bigger people, and it makes that they can earn bigger money. So now the growth just got way bigger. They were much more on the ground. It takes away from the the local societies, though. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like it's like kind of saying like, "Hey, no, no small business here." That's it. So that mm. that makes a huge change when it comes to like um, variations or different strains. When you have a lot of small growers, the the variation becomes. Very big, yeah, because a lot of people grow all these different things. Now, when it's just like a few big groups, they'll just grow like one strain. Exactly. Yeah, they want to make easier. it easy and they it don't care as much what's the competition. Well, it's not about competition. It's probably just about being safe and just keeping it as simple as like streamlined as possible, right? Yeah, yeah, as well. Less complex. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Because they need to count on it. Yeah. You know? And then you get these niches. Higher stakes. We've, we've been really Whereas, blessed. you know, in the U.S. right now, we're dealing with a, a saturation issue because it's getting blown up in every state, every place. We got Oklahoma. We have Oregon. These places are, are blown out. <laughs> it's insane. It's, it's, it's a disrespect to cannabis almost. Well, there's so much mids. There's so much mediocre That's, a, that's weed. what I'm saying. That's there's, the issue. And I'm not saying there's no good growing cannabis. Here. Obviously, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. maybe 1%. <laughs> but no, seriously, that probably would be the percentage. It's and probably, we, and we know those people, yeah. but, um, you know, for the most part, it's like people are just doing mass production trash, wide open, careless. And then you come over here where this was like the, essentially the birthplace of society accepting it. And, uh, it's still, it's like the, it's like, I would say what early two thousands, late nineties. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, like that type of vibe. Cat and mouse, just like, you know, got to take secret trips to the shop to get this and that. And you know what I mean? Whereas like you go to LA right now and you see people on the highway, they got trays in the back of their truck and they're riding and they don't give a shit. Yeah. I, we, I mean, we had good days though, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. And I think well, it's, ta- can you talk, yeah. talk to us about those? Well, like, um, now it's illegal to have a plant anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Even one. There is like well, a, what was it like? Something they called, uh, Gedoogd which kind of is that um, it's not accepted, but you, you, you won't get punished if you grow like five, below five plants. That's tough. Yeah, but then you can use all <laughs> kinds of things which they make, say make you a professional grower. So if you, if, when you have a light and an extraction and watering system, now you're a professional grower, yeah? Someone said that was also like no nutrient bottles. Were they high when no, they made? Were yeah. they high when they made that? Bro, wow, it's, it's crazy. What? It is crazy. Dutch sometimes have a very weird way of thinking with things. Yeah, it, yeah. it's funny though because coming from the outside in, you just don't think about that. And that's why we like to bring that up because it's such a different spin that you know they are still under underground, you know, and and so you appreciate it even more when you find fire. Yeah, yeah growing got way harder. Yes. Back in the day, they didn't actively search for you either. Yeah. And that's, that's totally changed now. So. Wow. It's more of a thing. Yeah. The young homie said, man, you can even go. And if you go to try to pay, pick up certain pesticides or certain things, they ask questions. People will, I mean, it's, it's that much, even not even just grow store, but other, you know, stuff around hydroponics or around growing or around cannabis. Yeah. Like if you go to like a garden center. And oh, you'll ask for like it, sp- specific it. type things or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you know, they it's similar to certain things. Like if you want <laughs> Sudafed and Walgreens, they like make you give you your ID and shit. Yeah, yeah. You're like, all right, okay. I mean, yeah. uh, young guys will walk in there and say, yo, yo, I got the, all these, uh, they say it's spider mites. Yeah, I got these spider mites. What do you have for spider mites? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what they Damn, they got to do what they got to do, man. We have uh, 911. Yeah, no, are we? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly. We'll sign your name right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah fingerprint. identification. <laughs> oh, man. When you're not smoking your, your own stuff, what, what do you usually like to go to? Is there a certain go-to smoke? I smoke a lot of traditional hashish. I mean, I smoke Kelly weed as well. Yeah. But Nepali, 
Nepali is your go-to. What, what type uh, of Cali you Nepalese? Smoking? Nepali, India, and Moroccan hashish, and then uh, the traditional style. So these days they grow a lot of mo- modern genetics in Morocco as well. I don't like that stuff. I don't like the new techniques they use sometimes. I don't like that stuff either. And you could taste the difference. You can literally oh, yeah, see the change. Wow. See, how about that? Even it in seems, Morocco, it's it not seems, traditional. It seems a bit drier. It's like, a, yeah, uh, those pieces that are there, they're aged as well. The, yeah, not, no, not these, yeah. obviously. I'm saying the stuff we're seeing in the shops and stuff. Yeah, like, it's lower quality. The, okay. Yeah. Just the Moroccan hat, it's just not. Uh, and not a lot of cream. I used to see when I used to buy the. Yeah, the blonde. And, yeah, the blondes where they would cut it and it would literally. Yeah, know. so that, that's a pretty good commercial export quality then. And that's a cold press. So it, it, it's pressed without heat and not too much extreme pressure. Then it stays much more blonde and you, you can smell the flower much mm. more then um, as well. So it has like a sweet type of smell as well. Then you have uh, like warm pressed hashish like uh, Moroccans. Um, they're like uh, sometimes brought inside shoes and things like that. Yeah. You um, told me a good funny one about that. It even yeah. looks like a shoe sometimes. So to see the quality, um, you can kind of hear it when you uh, put it on the table, you know, the sound of that. Um, then it needs to be tough. It needs to react fast to like when it gets warmer, it needs to get soft fast. Uh, when it cools off, it needs to get hard fast. Interesting. Anything that stays soft is always a bit, you got to be wary of. Damn. Yeah. The Nepalese yeah. has is a totally different thing. Yeah. Yeah. It can be soft and it can be tough as well. It is. Yeah. It's like. And you, you say you like it because it's spicier. Yeah, that's a very different high. Like uh, the Moroccan hashish, they have a lot of body type effects, so they get you more stoned uh, thing. Uh, the Nepalese, um, they have a pretty wide range of effects from hashish that comes from there, but most of them say much more higher. So it's more comparable with like the haze effects as well. Mm. <laughs> and it's very different flavor, just like with food. It's like a totally different kitchen, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we, we did a little worm on the Nepalese and we put it in with the haze. And, <laughs> and it's got uh, us talking low. <laughs> it definitely got me sat back for this podcast. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal, man. So I like how I'm looking at this and it still looks, you know, it still looks wet and sticky, but yes. it has its form. Yeah, and that that hash is like four or five years old as well. Wow. Legendary. That is crazy. That's what's cool about hash too, is like you can age it. Not like yeah, flour. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can compare it to like wines and stuff, yeah? So some yeah. of the years are better as well, of course, yeah? yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great point. Okay. Yeah, and so really good wine, and you can keep it very long. Yeah, exactly. And it almost like, it grows more of a meaning, you know? When when we smoked yesterday, it was, he said it was seven-year-old hash, like some OG Kush from Humboldt, and uh, it was just, you know... Incredible. It makes it feel special, yeah. the experience, you know what I mean? And you taste it and the flavor and you're like, you know what? That is old school. Like I haven't tasted that terp in a minute and it's just aged in this hash. But you know, it's interesting. Like we have the rosin wave going on in the States right now, but other than that, extracts are not really even like you hear a little bit about sauce, but nothing really crazy. It's just really about rosin right now. Yeah. Rosin hash you, is you like, really, the wave. The, like the States really don't have access and aren't really educated on true hashish. I mean, I think now with, you see how all these acres of outdoor grow are booming and flying up. Yeah. And they're going to be, they, they still gonna be don't like, get oh, it. Oh, yeah. But they're probably going to be, oh, they're going to be needing to make, ha- make hashish soon. Yeah, they are. I mean, that's yeah. a good point because they're going to need, they're going to need some real, some real hash makers to know how to do it though. You know what I mean? Because yeah. The techniques and the shortcuts aren't going to do it. The, the people that are making this good hash that you're talking about, I mean, this is like generations and generations of, I'm oh, sure, it's, technique. Yeah. and It's like when, you know, an Italian makes uh, pasta sauce, you know? It's like your dad's dad's dad or your mom's 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 taught you, and then you this is the way you do it. And, I mean, they, they definitely need to make that because can you imagine some of the strains and some of the flavors we could get out of some of the Humboldt strains? done that way it'd be very different with yes. those techniques yes have you ever done any of your own strains that way and tried to make hash very similar to the N- nepal or some of those um yeah you need to write plant though to like come to a, a, a similar type flavors that that's almost almost not possible okay so yeah. it's a completely different um, product 
one, it's it's all grown outdoor, mm-hmm. so it needs to be done with outdoor flower. Um, then it's all grown from seeds as well, so it's a variation in. Oh, so you're getting a lot of high, yeah, full so need, spectrum. Yeah, and then you need a lot of plants as well. Um, then these plants are dried much longer than people think as well. So in the Moroccan, well, that's about Moroccan hashish, when they do it really like a traditional way, um, it's just laid in sheds, yeah? And it lays there for like a very long time, two months, three months, or before it gets beaten into hashish. Man. So these plants will be all yellowed out by that time as well. And all of those things have to do with the flavor and the change. It's like a ripening. That's why I say it's more comparable to like things like wine and stuff. Terroir. It's very terroir. It's, uh, it's everything that adds to it that's in the area and the people and the tradition. And yeah, yeah, you change it and you miss it. That's insane. If I could go back since we're talking about hash, what was the first hash you ever smoked? Do you remember the first time you ever smoked? First time I smoked was uh, hashish as well, Moroccan hashish. Moroccan? Yeah. Real yeah. Moroccan. Yeah, real Moroccan. Oh. There oh. wasn't that much, like, there wasn't much Dutch weed at that time anyway. But, um, yeah, one of my family members um, worked in a cafe where he sold hashish. Oh. So, uh, when I was, like, really, really young, he always had hashish and I see him smoke it. So, <laughs> I, 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 I nicked a little piece. Tried to roll the joint. I, I, I was all alone when I smoked uh, my first joint. Really? Without friends or anyone. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's the first time we've yeah. ever heard that. How I old was were you? so curious. Um, probably like 12, 13. Wow. Very curious. So wow. smoking hashish at 12 or 13. Who had you seen someone that you yeah, thought? My, my, yeah. My who, uncle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're like, man, he's, he's, he, he looks his. To be really happy sometimes. I really liked him, yeah. So yeah, yeah. You really liked him. You were influenced, yeah. Inf- inspired yeah. by him. Yeah, Looked that makes sense. Him. Yeah. That's- a lot of people have like older brothers or a cousin or just somebody that older that they look up to that, yeah, you know, they they smoke and then it goes from there. So you took the hashish and, and put it in some tobacco and rolled a spliff or? Yes. Damn. How well did the spliff smoke that first oh, when you man, rolled I, up? I, I, that, like I had to cough a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you were you were struggling uh, through. I hadn't huh? smoked anything before, so. right? Yeah. So did you get did you get high? Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. first, yeah, you were feeling that, especially one. because of all the coughing and stuff. Yeah, so. and, <laughs> and the nicotine too. I mean, you yeah, just, nicotine as well gave like a that young a head buzz Yeah, that stuff, young. You know, you're like get, Ooh. get a bit dizzy type thing. Yeah, I had some bad stories. My dad he used to do Copenhagen snuff. And uh, I had swallowed some. He spit some of my icy drink one time and I swallowed <laughs> some and I got the spins and right away. It was crazy. And it's like <laughs> nicotine. If you're young, nicotine will really fuck you up. Oh, bro. It's definitely oh. crazy. Do you smoke that spliff and you were hooked from there or what? No, it's because um, my uncle lived like a two hour drive from us. So I... And I was very young, so I couldn't just go there on myself. Right. So it was right. only when I had like sleep there or whatever. Yeah. My parents would bring me there you, that I could nick a little piece and smoke it. And yeah. Stuff. So you, yeah, you so, the, uh, instead of pinching the bag, you were chopping a little corner off of the, yeah, yeah. the hash. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. And uh, did anybody coming up around you grow? Like what started you interested in growing? Um, my father is a p- professor of biology. So, um, we always had, he liked plants as well. So mm. We always had plants in the back garden, all kinds of, not cannabis plants then, but other things. Yeah. Um, so my mom found like a weed in my, in my jacket. Um, so we had the family talk at the table. So I had to come. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my dad said, yeah, yeah. My dad and my mom have never smoked and still have never smoked cannabis. Yeah. So. Uh, wow. Even having karma as a son. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Have, they, have they came and seen things and what you've oh, built? They're, okay. they're very proud though. They, no, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're very good. Um, so, and my dad said, well, I looked into it and um, yeah, I think it's, I don't mind if you smoke sometimes because um, I think it's better than if you drink alcohol every day and things like that or get really drunk. Yeah. So, and I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. yeah me neither. Really smart. Yeah. yeah. Very smart. So then I told them, yeah, but you know, it, it's very expensive and you don't know what they put in it. So I think it's better if I grow it in the backyard. <laughs> wow. I mean, for the foresight on this man is amazing. How old are you? 
13, 14. Wow. Yeah. This is going. This and, is, and so then if you don't mind me asking, like how did the, then he went out and bought seeds? No, yeah. I did that myself. Oh, really? He just gave yeah. you the go ahead. He gave yeah, you like the blessing. The, like, like really cheap. It's like the tourist type brand, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At one of the third do you remember, party shops. Do you remember where, where you maybe went, got them or how you got the seeds? Or even what's yeah, we had like a it, it was like a little weird shop that, that it, we called it the Chinese shop, but it, it, yeah, that's because that the sense. guy that went worked there was like Chinese, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and they had like all these dragons and they had some bongs and some seats in a little corner, you know, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's where I bought them. That's and then wow. room in the garden, and then so we went on holiday. Did they have a name? Oh, really? We had to go on holiday, yeah? So I have these two plants in these <laughs> pots in the garden. So um, okay. I went to the neighbors and uh, I asked her, say, can you water my plants then? Yeah, so I put them in their garden. And when I came back, they, they just exploded. They were so big. <laughs> oh my, that's amazing. So it went well. They took care of them well. And oh, they took, probably took care better than I than could. you would, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. man. So what'd you do then? I couldn't wait until it was finished, of course. Yeah. When yeah. you're very young, it's your first time. So every, like every you two days, I chop up. little butts off, <laughs> put them in the oven, put it, you know, put them on the heating and stuff, you know? You sound like every U.S. grower right now. When they first start. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely, that's awesome, man. And then it progressed from there. Yeah. From, from that time, um, I started growing outdoor every year. At your, at your place. Yeah. And your and dad was living with my parents. Still, was yeah. he interested in it when you would go out no, there? No, he just thought it was a good hobby for you and, and you're doing yeah, something. Just, just let me do what yeah. I wanted to do, you know, like most kids go ride yeah. your bike, have fun, play yeah. tag, you know, I mean, don't do too much. You could grow here then. It was more accepted kind of like it is not, than it is now. Huh? Wow. So it wasn't something really That's bad. crazy. It wasn't that bad and stuff. Yeah. And then do you remember having some good outdoor crops? Uh, I did like this. Yeah. Third time, probably that. Then it's when it got to, got much more serious as well. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Oh man, any of the strains you remember? Any of them that you grew that that first start? Was I there think, any names? I think there? First thing were like more like a, a probably almost all Af Afghani type things, L but like yeah. literally from Afghanistan, probably that back that far back. I, I really, really know. Cause these were like, I call it tourist seats. Yeah. Cause they're like pretty cheap and stuff. And I think it's, they just, put you just don't even know what it is. This nah, is a not cush, really, I think. Some type of kush. That's dope though. That yeah. is so cool. <laughs> I mean, the third year it started growing with, um, clones cause you had already had like grow shops and stuff. So, and then, and then it was still legal to sell clones. So, um, we used to grow like a, a strain called a purple power. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like a special outdoor Dutch strain uh, and Viking. So these That's strains were made to grow outdoor as well. Um, and then you would just buy like four clones, um, and then you planted them. They finished because uh, the season here is like pretty wet in the end. So when it yeah. really ne really needs the sun, the sun kind of goes away. That's one problem, and it starts to rain a lot, so everything molds away. Now you have to grow like strains that are um, very light sensitive, so they flip into flower faster. Got it. Um, things that have shorter flowering times and stuff. Auto flower even? The, today, yeah. Today I you can just do auto flowers, of course. Yeah. You don't mess with any of that with breeding, any of that stuff. No. Yeah. No. Do you, going back, the first when you got into breeding, well, how far after that was when you first started growing? I started working in a coffee shop when I was 18. Um, that's when I kind of started growing indoor as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then just progressed through breeding years later, you started to think like, what if I well, did this times this? At that time, there was only like, you, like I said, you would go to the grow shop and you would buy your clone. Like the Dutch culture, everybody's almost only used to grow clones. That's also why there was not that much variation. Interesting. Yeah. So a lot of Americans start with seeds. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in Holland, people are kind of used to get a little clone. Uh, I. I think in America, most people are going after clones. Now they are. Point. When now I they started, are. Now yeah. they are. Yeah, when I course. started, it was no, all seeds. For sure. Yeah. But now it's like, I don't even think people know what to do, would know what to do with seeds. They come in just thinking, we got to get clones. It's tough. I don't know. I, I feel both ways about it. There's a lot of small growers all over the United States with one tent. And well, they'll buy. What we're seeing now is people that don't want to be growers. They're coming in to be breeders. They're coming in to find things and 
get it in growers' hands and stuff like that. So you are seeing a little bit of that more where they're taking seeds a lot more serious. And then you're seeing these crews and bigger brands that are taking seeds very, very, very serious because they realize, like we were talking earlier, you got to have a hit single so you can make it out before you can make an album. So, and they need that stunner strain and it can't just be another, you know. I mean, it's when the competition comes, everybody starts growing the same thing. That doesn't work anymore. Now that it's legal and you have a brand and everything, you know, you need to differentiate yourself from other things. Um, And since with all these like shared clones, you know, so everybody has the same thing. Now that's, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So you need to have your own thing inside your company now. Yeah. So that's why seeds and selections become very important in-house breeding. I I think when you're a company like that and that size Mm -hmm. and stuff, you need to do your own thing inside as well. Yeah. Or have it done for you. you know? Even if you're selecting from other people's genetics and then and then moving forward from there. Yeah, I, I do. I agree. It, it's tough to explain that to people, though, because the difference from, from seed and from clone is so big. For, for finding a keeper where instead of having someone's keeper given to you. you know? Oh, yeah, you know, it, it takes effort. It does. I mean, I think it's the but so best part of growing for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the selection part is the best thing there is and uh, seeds as well, you know. There's so much different things in there. Um, there's a lot of things most of us haven't even seen as well. Flavors you don't think that even exist in there. You, you, you'll bump into all kinds of things if you grow like very, a lot of different things or think a little bit outside the box. I like the way you put that. You'll bump into different things. Very true. We used to pop. I know it's not a lot for some people, but we would go through like 600 seeds a year for a few years in a row going through and just, it didn't matter which company, just 600 seeds about as many as we could go through trying to find new phenos. Yeah. I think for Dutch standards, that's already pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these days. Okay. Yeah. For some of the California companies, it's, I mean, it's massive. They're going through quite a few. I mean, they'll spend $20,000, you know, every month or two on seeds, just as R and D. I mean, you almost need dedicated, you definitely need dedicated space nowadays. Oh yeah, yeah, you do. You know, yeah. I think as an American legal company, you need to have a constant selection running because it's like something that is a hit. It goes much faster every time now. It's 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 very comparable to music as well. Yeah, back in the day, something would be number one maybe for like eight weeks. Now it's like you're happy if you're there for like one or two albums. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even if it's a Drake album, it's like two three months tops. (laughs) Yeah, the best. Most people are two three weeks. And you forget about that project and you really don't play too much of it anymore. Unless you got a favorite song on there or something, you keep replaying it. But for this catalog of what we're seeing going pretty much global of these Cali strains, these top tier Cali strains, and we're seeing them passed around all around the world, basically. I feel like these guys from these different camps that have these strains, like that's their hit single for the different groups and now they're working and they're all working hard on their albums, you know, and we're like watching a whole new industry kind of break in front of us. And it's crazy to come around because I was here in 2017 as well. And there wasn't Cali selection out here. It wasn't really out here. Now, now, not in, not in now the co- that a, coffee shop, like yeah, in the coffee now. shops. Now I come in here and I'm like, damn, I can get real Cali in here. And that's crazy. I mean, that's, that's, that's a, that's a culture shock. Yeah. You know, and then now we're, you know, we're going to London next and you, you know, you were telling us, you were like, you're going to be surprised. You know what I mean? There you're going to see, um, there's very good home growers in, 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 uh, in England. Um, there's no coffee shops like it is here. Yeah. So it's a very different way the community grew there. Um, they have a close connection with, with us as well, more than Dutch do. Absolutely. Um, you'll see Kelly weed there as well. Yep. But the local grown, it, it can be very good, like very good. It, awesome. Like these grows, they're all smaller grows as well, yeah? So, yeah. you know, that's a big difference as well. The bigger yeah. it gets, it's harder to get like a personal style grown flower, of course. Yes. So um, their rooms are probably like between uh, two and 10 or 20 light type rooms. So they're very dedicated then. And then they have just that room as well. Which, not like, oh, they have 10 of those rooms, you know? We yeah. got some of the biggest brands back you know, back in Cali right now are small batch brands. And I would be willing to say they probably only have 10 to 20 lights. 
so that they can get that quality to where it's like, you know, you're, you're buying it pretty much by the ounce, you know, a high price I think, and it's going around yeah. like numbered jars, like, okay, this batch, 400 jars. I think scaling up like quality and that style of grow that that's not that easy. No, it takes time, you know, for, uh, for everybody. It took me a whole year, almost more. It took me a year and a half to just figure out how to go from a house to a warehouse. That just that, yeah, that just leap alone was like, wow. Okay. And I mean, some people probably have a mentor and it took them three months, but to figure out everything and fi- and try to understand why this is working. Okay. We don't need to air exchange. We just need to do this. We need, it was like, wow. Okay. A year, year, year and a half of that. Uh, after I had already done 12, 13 years of cold, 14 years of cultivation. So people need to understand that it just takes time. Same thing with seeds. Have you had any American companies reach out to you to be like, Hey, would you be interested in breeding for us or anything like that? Um, I mean, I have my friend partner that lives in LA, so he prefers me to, when I do those things that it's for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you go, yeah, no. you've always had some awesome uh, connections to L.A., man. I mean, Cali Kush Farms, I've seen some of your work what, through before. What's, yeah, what's, yeah, those are friends. Yeah, what's some of your yeah. favorite uh, Cali smoke right now? Zito's. Zito's are crazy. Zito's are I was just saying top three. Do you like the original? I mean, I like OGs, yeah, I'll be honest. And I like them Ooh. grown the way they grow grown. In Have LA you tried the stuff. elephant's growth OG? No, I don't think that's the one I... We got to make that I'm looking happen forward to. Big home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I spoke we'll Josh's, Josh's OGs then. Uh, yeah, Josh Kelly Lee, Kush right? Home. Yeah. Shout out to oh. him, man. That's... Yeah, I mean, that's a fucking... Guy. Yeah. Gas. That's dope. OGs, yeah, super gassy. So when that's your what, go-to. What else besides Zito's? I mean, I'll smoke runs and gelato type things as well, you know? Just not as enjoyable to you or what? Uh, no, well, if I have a choice, I'll, I'll choose Zito's and OG... Uh, Personally, yeah. above them, yeah. Have that's you tried, most, that has to do with the flavor. Have you tried Zope? Yeah, yeah. No, you that's nice. That's nice. I mean, RS Eleven we liked a lot. It yeah, always, it always smokes really nice as well. It's, it's heavier. You know? RS Eleven, um, I feel like, it's heavier than the Z crosses. Yeah, yeah. Then um, I mean, I was. We, I see the mole. Yeah. You know, yeah. When they <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I yeah. see them in Cali as well when I'm there. So I see, see a little bit how yeah. the difference becomes after right. it's after it gets smuggled here. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, a lot of times we were going into shops and the way I could tell was from the smell. Yeah. hundred percent. More than anything. Oh no, yeah. Of course. Of course. Turf yeah. profile. You're like, yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll know by the taste too, but. Have you seen any uh, local, like of the similar type strains grown here? Like gelato or something grown yeah. Dutch grown? Like no, we haven't. No. Yeah. Mean green. Oh, so the so, one you just met does a blue zushi local. No, actually, let me take but, that back. We 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 see we got some dizzy duck runs right here. So we looked at this. They just gave us this yesterday. It's good. All their stuff is really fresh and grown right. You know what I mean? They, it's it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's the growth style it's, will always be different. So it's always different, even if we um like we grow the same cut. Yeah. And, and we grow it here and you would grow it there, it would come out different. I feel like yeah. with anywhere there's fake cuts being passed too. So oh, like, a lot, I, you know, certain yeah. strains I'll be like, Oh, this, Oh, we know that. And then I'll smell it. And, and I'm the, like, Oh, the that's... coffee shop culture, the same thing. If people walk in 10 times and ask for a certain strain, they'll have it the next week. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just got those in. Yeah. yeah. And you won't believe this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not they do that in the States too, but they just never admit it. That's funny, man. That's wild. Dude. And then, I mean, there's a plate of seeds in front of me too. That's just off the chain. Talk to us about what you're working on gear wise, like mm-hmm. where your head's at and like what you, what you want to create your future to look like in your catalog. I mean, at the moment it's hard to just keep reproducing the seeds that the people want that I've made before. Uh, Cause I like kind of to constantly make the same thing. I don't like to do it once. You know, so some of my strains have been available for like 10 years. And I like, like that. that. Okay. Yeah. With the um, same sticking, parents. Sticking to the yeah, same parents. That's key. Yeah. I feel like a lot of Dutch strains I've, I've gone back after years and the parents aren't the same. So I can't, I'm looking through things and I can't find anything even no, similar. That, that's because it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. So things, <laughs> that part. Go, things happen a lot. I mean, yeah. back in the day, it used to be legal to grow for seed. Yeah. So they did it in big greenhouses. That's why the Dutch seed companies became such a huge success as well. Yeah. So they 
would say it's to grow for seeds. And then sometimes it didn't grow seeds, of course, as well. So, <laughs> right. Um, but now that's very different. Yeah. So yeah, you should get busted as well. huh? Yeah. Definitely lose some cuts. Definitely lose some yeah. moms and I mean, dads we all, and genetics. We're all and dealing with that hundred percent, even just having to just move and things happen and yeah, yada, yada, yada. This guy, how long you been living with plants? This guy's been living with plants. I can't tell you how long. How long you been living with plants? 18 man? years. 18 years this guy has had at least a room full of plants and is like living with them. Mm -hmm. Like that's his roommate. Yeah, yeah. I mean. He's a solo rider. Like he, he's lit. Like he fucks with plants. You don't really like, you know, he's just, just coming around to people these last five years. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But no, for I, real, yeah. I like, I got to give you credit on that because I'm like, yo, for real, like your roommates have been plants for 18 Obviously years. as long as I've known you, but. Mm-hmm. Fucking long time man. since I started because once I found some stuff I really enjoyed and was ours, and uh, I realized like what it takes when you lose something, you know, when you lose something great, uh, you might never forget it your whole life. Yeah, very true. You might go to the deathbed thinking, like, man, remember that blueberry that we used to have? I, I mean, certain people. And uh, once I realized that, I became a little bit of a hoarder of stuff that I enjoyed. And, and then, you know, and then you go through grow life and you realize, like, damn, if. This is an interesting thing that I've learned. If you give someone a strain, they'll easily give it out. If you charge someone for a strain, they will not easily let that go. So that's, I've seen that happen now too with friends where I'm like, yeah, yeah, 1500 bucks or two grand where normally people would pass things because I know he's going to immediately give every single person another free cut of it because it was cost nothing for him. He had nothing to put into it, but if it's a charge, it will stop that from being spread so fast in my opinion. So I, it's the only way to really like keep genetics around, but also like I give, I, you give them to a certain friend and the next thing you know, it's like, look at, I mean, stuff is moving so fast right now. Strain wise, it gets out so fast. Next thing you know, you don't get a year growing it or two, you get one to two harvests. And now people are like, yeah, we're not on that anymore. Now that's why yeah, I got to have the consistent selection room dedicated to that. You got to have the next thing ready already because it's going so fast now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you had, I'll be honest, if you have like a real, real true winner, it will stay for years. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to keep it in house now before like growers, growers always used to share everything, whether it's information and, and definitely in the illegal type markets. Yeah. People would share because you feel like together against the rest. Right. You do. You know, and that changes a little bit. It's when different now. Legal. Yeah. Of yeah, course. It's very competitive. It Especially is. within California, the top tier brands, like it's you, you, like it, you, you know, you see friendly, but in public, but in reality, it's like very, very, very competitive and everyone's like looking for that edge. Yeah. And I think, uh, a lot of that's not always the growers. I mean, I've, I've always been in a room of growers and everyone gets along pretty well. You know, the passion for the plant is always number one with most of them. And it's a lot of all the other stuff, you know, the, all the guys around them all the investors, all the egos, you know, the guys that are behind the scenes actually putting in a lot of the, the grow work. Uh, I mean, love for the plant always comes through. The Airbnb said we would get kicked out if we smoked in here again, but Cody, I just, had to roll up some Dutch Crown Z. Yes. Light this thing up right here for this, for this combo, just so it can get that much better. Pack gods is smoking wow. everywhere. This is crazy. <laughs> this is real Z though. It's Amazing. an upgraded version too with the structure of it. I mean, it's thick. It's not that it's light just grown fluffy. perfect and smoking like amazing Z. So it's a real treat. You would say the best Dutch grown, I mean, just off the chain. The best. I would say this is the best Dutch joint I've smoked this whole trip. Yeah. The DBX. Pass into karma, man. Z ZBX, I mean. Big joint pass. You come to Amsterdam a lot, the city? No, not anymore. Not anymore. No. Nah, only, yeah. when, only when you well, have to. Only for people sometimes, but that's it. No, it's like a two and a half hour drive. What? Why did? Why do they hate Americans here? <laughs> do they? I don't know. No, I don't think they do. I don't think no? they do. Nah. No. Nah. I think you Americans a lot of times that when they come here, they spend their money easy and yep. stuff. I think Amsterdam people love it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, Amsterdam is different than almost the whole rest of Holland. It's like little country inside. See, the that's country. what I was talking about. Like how outside of Holland, you said, what, if we were to go to the shop there, they wouldn't give us, they wouldn't give us anything. Can't or they, get in. 
Oh, we couldn't get in. Yeah, yeah they stopped all our local. That's only still a few towns, which are most times uh, near the border, so that near Belgium and Germany. Oh, that's why. So that's why. So it used to be like extremely busy in those towns. Um, and and essentially in, in the states, that's what's like Oklahoma's doing for like Texas. Yeah, and Colorado, like, yeah. this and that, and uh, yeah, Kansas, and they know, and it's just stupid that like, like figure it out because the governments need money. That's pretty obvious. True. So you know what I mean? When it's that illegal in the next state or here, then in the next country like Belgium or Germany, Tax those, com- they, those countries are like pushing on, on Holland. Like, oh, no, we want, want it, we want them closed and we want them closed. Yeah. Same with the states. They do the same thing. Yeah. Kansas filed a lawsuit against Colorado yeah. saying like you, too many people are driving here back here. With weed through our interstates. Yeah. And it's they're the like, well, what are we supposed to do about it? Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Thing. Right. Do you think it's uh, like, what do you, the, what you're supposed to do about it is you're all supposed to get together and everyone figure it out. That's your business. You know what I yeah, mean? At yeah. That point, right. It's just like no one's handling that business. Are you talking about government? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What I'm talking. Yeah. Seriously though. It's like, if that's what you chose, like you got to figure it out. And I'm just surprised that things haven't been progressed more here. And then I look back to what we have going on and I'm like, man, it's a complete shit show. And like, I don't even know what's going to happen because the market is crazy right now. It's very unlike it, it was a year ago. Fast. It went extreme it fast. It went hard 180. And quick. prices went up so high that people who have been retired for 10 years were like, I'm back. Like people, I mean, yeah. honestly. And so what that did in a year, it complete reversal. A lot and of now mediocre. things are taking a 50 to 80% you know, decrease in value for the majority of the commercial market. You know what I mean? So it's interesting because I I don't see that happening anywhere else. I mean, at all, but it's because of regulations. They've opened it up now and you see what's kind of the mentality of everyone's just like, we're going to Oklahoma. We're we're moving to Oregon, the whole family. We're going to just, (laughs) you know what I mean? And they're just, you know, it's interesting because I think maybe the best times now, it's tough to say that for like here, right? Because they can't have grow stores. They can't do this. But let's say 10 years ago when they could grow, that that was the best. It's like California right before legalization. Right. Our best times. Oh, those were the best times you know? because it was still running. You could still have some flexibility. Wasn't shut out yet. I mean, I remember getting notices from the shops there. Like we got like six months left. We were like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, well, yeah, our you know. golden days were more like the nineties. Yeah, so you're 2000s. lucky. That's a whole different story. You, yeah, that's now well, it's totally different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, now it's much harder. You know, much yeah. harder. Yeah, margins much, you know, yeah, tighter. Everything, everything's, you know. Did you guys ever have a seed store here in Amsterdam? Like a lot of these nah. other seeds? No, nah. 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 so I always try to not kind of be known in, in Holland as well. Ah, okay, uh, okay. It's about, it's, yeah, that's a good point. It's better to be known outside of your place. Yeah. A hundred percent. What's, what's next for karma genetics, big dog? Like breeding wise? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Or anything, anything in, in the States popping up or anything anywhere else popping up? I'm probably going to be working with one of these 10 licenses here in, in Holland. Hey. They do awesome. a test, like a five year test. So there's that's two, huge. 10 licenses work. Man, that's um, major. It was a lottery. It. I tried to get one as well. I didn't win. So, but um, someone's gonna it, uh, no, bless yeah. you. Yeah, I'm talking talking to people, hey. so I'll, I'll probably as work they with should. One of those. Yeah. If they smoke this Dutch going Z, I mean, they better. Yeah, I mean, come on, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> no, for real though. So you're gonna get that. Should get a shot at that, and and when yeah, is so that rolling? Genetic out? wise, I'll probably work with one of these. Yeah. Wow, man, they'll be lo- that, that's a leg up for them. That's what a lot of the homies back in Cali are having to do right now. Is just like work on licensing deals. Yeah, this is like a similar type thing. Then, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. and 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 get their product out that way. So it's not fully yeah. them yet, but you know, it is their genetics, and it is you know getting dialed into how they do it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool. Yeah, that it's a collaboration still. You know what I mean? And then the community yeah, still got a. Any up with the community to come together and make that that leap still, and it's been a long road. Because how many years has oh. it been out here in Holland? Or like a for, uh, you, for you for you culture for me? your journey? Yeah. Um, if you if you started at like, twelve or thirteen, <laughs> yeah, like smoke. Because I mean, you, well, yeah, no, well, a little more than thirty years. Yeah, yeah, That's growing. Crazy. 
Yeah. And even then, at 13, you convinced that you should put some seeds in the ground. Yeah. It's so, amazing, that's man. That's like, yeah. you jumped, like, you were just like, I told mommy, smoked hashish, and then you're like, we're going to grow the plant now. Yeah, I told mom and daddy, he said, you don't know what they put in there there. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> so better, I just, can just grow it in the garden, yeah? So let me I grow some it. for myself. I love yeah. it. Shout out to uncle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His uncle, is he smoking, is he enjoying karma genetics? Nah. No, no? I don't think he smokes even anywhere. Uh, no, he inspired. Oh. He inspired a legend. He, uh, yeah. he created a legend. He yeah, helped yeah. inspire, create a legend, and he don't even smoke hashish anymore. It's all good. Maybe he'll hear this and he'll he'll decide to smoke a spliff with you or some shit. You ever collab with growers or other seed companies? Um, sometimes with other seed companies, like I grow uh, everybody's stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, I grow all, pe- all kind of people's stuff. I love hearing that. I have some seeds for you. Yeah. Also from a lot of people that don't have like seed companies and do things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, like that, yes. Then there's a lot of people that work with my gear as well. Cause I, exactly. I'm do, all about. Do you do like, it. do you like it when you get to, you know, see you come over or whatever and you get to see the creations of, you know, all your gear and see the flowers when, and when people smoke come it. back and show me things, look like cross this of you with this and stuff. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. I bet you get a lot of samples too. Like I did the fizz and here's yeah. the best this representation of that. And yeah. 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 That's a, that's, that's like the gift that keeps on giving. It's like rewarding work. No, that's Great nice. point. Great point. Long after. That's rewarding you've, work. You've left yeah. something on this planet it's, that will be here for 100 plus years. It's like being an artist and like letting people paint off your paintings. Yeah, it's it is. Pretty dope, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's, it's interesting. I'm just now making that connection as I'm talking with See, you and can, you're explaining it. They, because they can travel so far as well. Yeah. So it's grown like worldwide. Yeah. That's what I Which love about it. Which is incredible as well. Yeah. That's no what matter, I love about it. You know, Especially the hashish. South America, and, Australia, yeah. Russia, everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, that's great that your things go all around the world and then are grown by people there and enjoy it. That's, that's the big thing. It's the origin story. It's a, it's how many people's origin story was karma genetics. I like that. Right. Yeah. And that's you worldwide, know? worldwide impact, which I think is something that all of us desire as people. Yeah. Leaving yeah. a legacy that spawned and, and, you know, spread across the world. And is longer than you. That lasts longer yeah. than you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It will go you. on after you're gone. People, like, when people make other things with it and stuff, it lives on, yeah? Yeah, yeah It absolutely. becomes like this organic organic type thing that starts living its own life, yeah, you know? Yeah, absolutely. When people are so passionate about something they dedicate their whole life to it, I think that that is the legacy and it does live on, you know, when done genuinely right. Yeah, it you does. I mean? It 100% does. And it takes very... It takes a, a very min- a minute amount of people that can actually get that done. A few people I can think of is like, shout out, you know, rest in peace, Frenchy Cannoli, rest in peace, Franco. You know, those guys are like guys that I think that passed and just really lived out their full potential to the plant. Or when like people are making their things, to it. they're going to be referencing those it guys. It clearly wasn't about money or yeah. anything else. It was about the plant and nothing but the plant and being across the world with it, though. Yeah, you know, like everywhere can't, with it. Like, can't forget tr- Neville in that case as well. Yeah, exactly. And I've heard yeah. some crazy stories and every, every um, Dutch guy who's an OG to me references him. Oh yeah. He, he is. It's very important point and in history and everything can, can that he you, did there. Can you share any stories okay. or anything? Well, he, I mean, he, he did, I think probably what the first seed company, which is, and he sold almost always to America a lot. So that's why it, it, it blew up really big. Then he, he's responsible for some strains that kind of live off, uh, on in a lot of work of today, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah, he's just legend. Uh, yeah, definitely. It'd been, been like, and he was one of the first two as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, e- educate the listeners a little bit on, on Neville and who he was. Uh, Neville Schoenmaker. You looked up to him? Oh, yeah. When you were coming I think up. if you're, if you're Dutch and um, you, you're like really into cannabis or growing it and seeds and things like that, you got to look up to him. Absolutely. To. He's yeah. the first one. He, he showed it. He made the road kind of, you know, and then you walk after it. So, yeah. So, so talk about him. Talk about his, uh, his career. His big thing probably was all the analhazes. That's, that's what made him extremely known. Neville's Hayes. Yes. Uh, Neville, 
It's like a um, C5 Hays, which is a NL5 times Hays male C. Um, wow. A lot of that went all over the world. And I think that's probably also part, that's part responsible for like some of the New York Hayes as well. Absolutely it is. Yeah. 100%. And then um, he did like the NL5 times haze mill A, which gave like the A5 haze. Some of those cuts are still still being grown now today. And you might know We're them as something some different. different. Some on oh, this yeah. table. Yeah, yeah. You know, those right, are like yeah, hybrids bought, we just with smoked those. some. Yeah, those are hybrids that made took, with I those felt like clothes. I was in a time machine. Yeah. If you if you were going to put a few people like uh, Dutch uh, cannabis guys, like the top one or two that you would say are like OG you know, in your eyes, who would they be? Um, Simon from Sirius Seeds. Simon from Sirius. Okay. Real, real breeder as well. Tell us about, <laughs> educate us on Simon. Um, he's responsible for like AK-47. Oh, okay. wow. Cali Mist. Damn. Um, and he's a perfectionist as well. Yeah. He'll wow. work on things for like a very long time and stuff. Um, Is he still living? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Still doing his 100%. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. So Simon is here. Simon from Serious Seeds. Yes, AK forty seven. Yes. Wow, big staple. I love that. You need to that. see that back. That's also something now for, right. for growers to go after. I mean, obviously, if Karma's uh, put putting a stamp on saying he's a he's a perfectionist, yeah. that means a he lot. Yes, he is. Yeah, that's epic. Anyone else that you could think of offhand that you would say that's at the top of that OG list for you? Um, when it's Dutch. Well, we have so much, but he's American. Yeah, yeah he, right. He's an but yeah, he has to be in the line, I guess, as well. I had to read to figure yeah. that out. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. believe it. I was like, no way, because he's such a big staple over here. I was like, no way, he's not American. That can't be. He's Dutch, you know. But yeah, uh, amazing. He's American. Yeah, he's American. I mean, I, I like how everyone talks about him too. Very kind, uh, passing. Very love for growers. Seems like I keep hearing that. Seems yeah, like yeah. A very inter- interesting guy. Yeah. Like yeah. he's got oh, some good stories. Definitely very interesting. We're trying to get <laughs> with him. He gave me his phone number, but you know, it's challenging. So we're going to, we're going to figure it out. Oh, you're going to have to try to link up with him. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah maybe you yeah, can help, maybe you to. can help lay up, lay it up. He gave me his number, but I, you know, he's old school. So I don't, I don't know how, you know, plus my phone's been acting. Yeah. Crazy this whole time. I'll, I'll, I'll have to have you try on your phone. Yeah. I would love we'll to ring reach him out. again. We'll ring him in. Man, yeah. that's epic. Yeah. Hell yeah. No, for sure, man. Shit. What else, man? What else you want to touch on, Blackleaf? What's going on, bro? What I, are you I mean, thinking in your head right now, bro? No, I'm just. Are you going to pop these seeds or yeah. are you going to bullshit? No, no bullshit. And these are going right in the ground as soon we as gotta I We got to see these, man. I want to see what comes to these. Talk about some of the seeds. What do you, what gets your eye? I mean, all that? the hazes are crazy because. When you talk to a lot of the the older OG growers in America, the couple things that keep popping up that we keep hearing on the podcast and everywhere else is skunk, you know, yeah. and the same thing is um, sour, sour diesel keeps coming around. And, and even to the point where people don't know the wave starting yet, because I've had people like younger growers hit me Question and I'm like, it. oh, I'm about to get some sour going. And they're like, oh, you could sell that. And I just giggle. Like I've, I don't think you've seen what we used to, I mean, yeah, 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 definitely. Don't worry about that part of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Grown right. And, uh, honestly the hazes that we smoke before this podcast, I mean, are like reminiscent of, uh, the Sandlot movie. And I, I think it's, it's a I, staple in my life. I think it's a focus on not like, Oh, can you sell sour diesel? It's like, no, can you, can you pop something and find something that's, you know what I mean? Worthy of. Yo, here it is. You know what I mean? And like a hit, a hit single, you know, number that one. remix or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're looking in that pile of seeds, though, what, what would, you know, what gets your eye the most? Honestly, you know, off rip, the, well, just what I told you. But to be honest, like it, once you start to see structure, once you start to get smells off of stem rubs, once you start to bloom things, you're going to see it's never what I think it is. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I'll be like, Oh, I'd love the platinum cookies times this. And I really want to see this and Skittles times that. And then I'll throw some random strain in that was like, Oh, let's just see kind of what this is about. And you're like, what is the smell coming up? You know? And I'm always excited just about random stuff. So I have a feeling, honestly, like this fizz, you know, he kept talking about the terps on that. Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to be something that I keep going back to. I, I mean, it just sounds like something like, okay, this I hope is something dope comes from that. And then, I mean, 
silver amnesia times Colombian. You want to talk about racy, crazy highs. I mean, I'm sure there's something in there that will literally give you a full panic attack. What is it? Silver amnesia haze, silver amnesia. Okay. Times Colombian, which is like land race. So you're talking super sativa. So you got this crazy sativa times another crazy sativa from two different parts of the world when they, or they originated around the same place. Nah. Yeah. So well, yeah, they, I mean, they, well, they kind of are. I mean, Hayes is Hayes. sad to be right. mostly Colombian. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. two, I mean, unbelievable. The melon, the melon. I, it, when you think of cannabis and I think of melon strains, some of the best hashes I've had. We smoked some good melonade at the green place. Off the chain. That's, you know what I'm fire. saying? So, yeah, and strong, fire. strong weed. Yeah, stuff fire. that puts you out. I mean, we were smoking a hash joint and he passed me, we switched and he passed me a, a joint of a melon strain that we were, and I was like, is this hash in here? And it was hitting harder than the, the strain that we had it's picked and thrown hash in. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, I'm just, I'm going through these and uh, off the chain, bro. But the Band-Aid 75 Haze Femme where it says limited series at the bottom that I know, I mean, people would be be special in there. Yeah, those are long sold out already. There you go. People went crazy. I already know. And I'm, these are going in immediately. I mean, and I don't care that it's 14, 18 weeks. It doesn't matter to me. I'm looking for a diamond. What do you think? What do you think, Karma, about the old school strains starting to become nostalgic and maybe make a comeback? Do you think it's it's early for it or do you think? Um, I mean, marked wise, I think if you put it on the table, people will go for it. But it's not always possible to do it well in a commercial and a legal way with all the taxes and everything that's there now. Because those weeks difference make, of course, a huge difference in price then as well. Absolutely. Um, I think this is will will come back though. Yeah, I already see it also in America. I think I know well, a lot I, of people I, now I that like, are growing these type of things. You yeah, know? I think like with New York coming online, like New York, New Jersey. You mentioned Maine. That, that's, I think they're going to bring that it back. Really trigger it to go yeah, twice as fast because it was so huge and then just disappeared. Florida's opening up a lot, so yeah. that that South Florida. Also, you remembers it like that. It's nostalgic. Yeah. So, I mean, anything nostalgic, what would you pay for some nostalgia? Unlimited. It's not just that. It's like, um, fire. Uh, the, these hazes, yeah, they are. It's a different um, experience. It's a totally different thing. Yeah. If you look at today's like strains, even though there is totally different flavors than they used to be then, when it comes to the effect of it, it's kind of a lot of times forgotten these days. Yeah. It, they all make you, it's kind of a little bit bland on the facts. Today's weed, most of it, yeah. It so is. these hazes make you feel totally different than your modern type weed, yeah. It's yeah, and that's like if you put hashish in your joint or whatever. It's it's the same thing with the hashish here. It's just totally different experience. We used to always say like, I mean, it's a long lasting high too. It's not a it it's you know a long sedative high, and and you can smell it in the air when you burn it. It just yeah. is different, man. It it has that different funk and different even the look of it is like this is something from a long lost time yeah you know i like how you can age the hashish yeah yeah it's it's like the top quality is like special bottles of wine yeah these are crazy the hash is out and i mean the way people cut them off too with like straight knives and they'll slice it i i love it and it's an art that we don't have in the States that they need to, they need to experience. I, I mean, people look at it like, well, we have hash rosin. It's the next level. No, it's just different. It's a different product. It's a totally different product. Yeah. It's a totally different product. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's funny that like kind of what we have in the States is what you need here. And what you have here is what we need in the States. Like we need the coffee shop experience in the States. Yeah. All these different products need to be worldwide. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it just, yeah. They really do. Everybody, For every single government, every single country, everybody would benefit. 100%. That's clear. Yeah. I don't yeah. think anyone could really sit at a table and say that it isn't clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Politicians like with a straight somehow. face. Like I think they would be like, like 10 to one maybe. Yeah. You know? Well, like, and just like you said, maybe. the new generation will pass that on and, and things yeah. will, are changing and will change. We'll see it so, soon. Yeah. How long do you think? Before things like haze, well, for well, worldwide? No, before, for here. Before, before, is, before, 
places like Amsterdam and and Holland and and you know the uh, U.S. figure it out? I think U.S. is gonna be before others, but um, I think here in Holland. So we, now we're gonna have this test with these ten uh, legal grows. Um, they can only sell to like ten cities as well, selected for this test. So it's like eighty coffee shops that they need to buy from there. They're not allowed to buy from black market anymore then as well. That's the whole test thing oh. of it. Wow. So anything will, nothing will change during those five years. That's for sure. So it, it same strains, everything probably. Mm, no, no. Maybe some variation. No, in that. No. It, it is very Do clear. they got some strains over here? Like, is there, well, there's some, they need you know, karma. for these licenses. Um, is anyone going to be growing some Cali for be, any of these or, or? They need to be growing at least 10 strains. This was one of the demands for it. So, right. Um, what they're going to be growing? Well, We'll see, I guess. But, I mean, uh, that's why the one reach out to Karma. There's definitely a couple that's going to be good. Um, I mean, are you are you guys playing for keeps or what? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. Yes, sir. Uh, I got big some Karma. Things, got some things uh, for you got them things that, that, that I didn't bring on to the market and stuff. First, you didn't even yeah. bring, you didn't even let us see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, and then he can always pop seeds. I mean, but that's the thing the about it is like you, you, you can just keep looking and looking and like looking. Always, and looking I'm always looking. Like, He's the source. That's, that's what's dope about it is like, and any, for anybody listening that, you know, could see themselves as being a creative, but maybe hasn't found their outlet and loves cannabis. Breeding is just like, it's, it's just, it's the, you know, the interest that never stops getting more interesting. It's a never ending wormhole. You go down one spiral, in my opinion, then, you know, this is an amateur, amateur breeder, but you have all these different lineages and all these different things you can cross. And as new things come onto the market, maybe they spark your interest. Maybe they don't, but you start to have ideas about, well, man, that's interesting because that kind of resembles something from back in the day. And if I do this times this, what would that be like? Yeah. You know, and, and, and you can kind of resemble, and then he has genetics and access to genetics, just to be honest, karma does that very few people in the world have, if, if any. So it, it makes for, I have a huge seed box and you're a massive part of it. And Sour Power OG, I think I have like 12 packs of, I have, I've finally, you know, accumulated a huge chunk of your stuff. Oh, that's good to hear. I'm stoked on <laughs> yeah. it, man. And it and to to finally meet you after years of meeting your other half, uh, like you know the homie, your you you know your business partner. I just I'm so thankful, bro. Absolutely, Honestly. man. Thank yeah. you for making time, man. Straight up, thank you for driving out. All that, yeah, for real means a lot. He's definitely got some work to do with his gear, and uh, <laughs> we got to keep seeing you with the new school collabing, mixing. Shout out, sure money. Shout out, team ten. You know, all the boys, all the things. Yeah. See the collaborations keep popping off and uh, everybody keep coming together to make sure that like worldwide we can enjoy some fire. And if you can get a hold of Karma Genetics packs, bro, get them. Yeah, definitely. And, <laughs> man, and watch out for the fake accounts. I see you on there tagging the fake accounts. Oh, yes. Everybody going through, everybody going through that, right? Yeah, bro. You got to oh, put yeah, in bro. work. Yeah. You're like, all right, post some shit because it's we're not trying to get our customers robbed. <laughs> that's basically it. right you're like getting your customers robbed or your customers are getting robbed well because they're hunting Damn. down stuff and there's such a high demand that they can't find the right stuff yeah. i mean come on with anything in life we do that with weed we're like oh that's re that's zitos and then you yeah. look at it it's not it's fritos you know what i'm saying it's like it's some beater <laughs> you know i mean honestly so i've done it smoking before. on that fritos <laughs> yeah, man that, bro. that is not it. like cornmeal that's that ain't him nah so but man thank you big karma Honestly, bro. Absolutely, man. Salute. First smoke episode. of the day. Time's Appreciate karma. you. You want to leave us with anything? Just keep it real. Yeah. Hey, keep it all the way real. These strains are real. Hey, <laughs> keep it 100. All right, man. First smoke of the day, episode 17. Sign Big off. Amsterdam. Karma Genetics, man. White Ashes. Peace. Peace.